Welcome back. You're watching Business Morning on Channels Television. Of course, our conversation on the program today continues to focus on the economy. We'll be looking at a number of issues from the budget, the 2015 budget that is, to the benchmark or some of the parameters as listed in the budget, the 2015 budget, and of course uh, the recent pronouncement by the federal government reducing the pump price of petrol from 97 to 87 Naira. And being joined on the program by the Director General of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Muda Yusuf. Of course, we're going to be getting the organized private sector's uh, thoughts on the state of the economy. Well, Mr. Yusuf, good morning and thank you so much for coming on the program. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. So let's start with the you know, the issue that's firmly in everybody's face, which has been there since oil prices started dropping, you know, clamoring for the drop in the pump price of petrol. So the federal government announced that, you know, it's reduced the pump price from 97 to 87 Naira. What are your thoughts on this and how beneficial will it be for organized private sector? Well, I think it's a very good development. Uh, it shows at least from level of responsiveness on behalf of government uh, because globally uh, energy prices have been dropping and if there is any benefit from the recent collapse of oil price uh, the benefit is uh, in the area of dropping energy prices uh, that has a way of even cushioning some of the effects of the shocks of the oil price drop and of the depreciation uh, it could also go uh, a long way, I mean, if it goes lower enough, uh, to also help reduce operating costs of businesses. That's the pump price. The, the pump price, the drop in, in, in pump price. So it's a good development, uh, although going by some calculations, it is fair that it could have dropped further than that. Mm. Uh, there are estimates that current landing costs of uh, PMS is around 70-75. No, 77, actually. The 77, PPPRA uh -huh, announced that, yes. Uh -huh, 77. So we are still selling at 87. I mean, there are still some gap. Again, you can also reason with government. Perhaps they are worried about the challenges of volatility because it is easier to drop a price than to increase it. So perhaps that is why the government is taking a rather conservative position. But we are hoping that it will drop further. Okay. But beyond that, we are also concerned that the price of diesel has not dropped as it should. Most businesses, big organizations, uh, use a lot of diesel. They use diesel to power their generators. They use diesel for their trucks. All these trucks you see around, all of them are running on diesel. And diesel is still very expensive. Although I know that uh, the diesel is not regulated. I'm talking of price now. It's not regulated. It's already deregulated. Mm -hmm. And one of the beauties of deregulation, theoretically, is that it should at least reflect changes in the cost parameters. Now, oil prices have been dropping now for the past two, three months. But this more, more, than, more than three months. Uh -huh. This price has not been dropping significantly. So there's a need for PPRA to also look at this. Uh, when, we say, when we talk about deregulation, deregulation does not mean an absence of regulation. You still regulate a deregulated system in order to avoid exploitation of the people. You know, I mean, by now we should expect to be buying diesel at, uh, at 100, 100 naira per liter or less. Okay, let me just quickly read you this know? comment. Yes. Um, Olushala says that the federal government's motive in reducing the price of PMS is good. However, suggests a further reduction to reflect the true position, which should be around 50 to 54 naira per liter. And he's also saying that the federal government would have announced total deregulation of the downstream sector once and for all, which would not have been greeted with any form of strike. Do you share the same view as well? Yeah, yeah, I share the view. Because, you know, government involvement in the downstream sector has created a lot of problems for this economy. We have seen all the scandals that, you know, came along with subsidies, scam. You know, there was even a time the uh, government was spending close to 1.5 trillion on subsidy, you know, while other major sectors were stuff of funds. So if government must exit, this is the best time for government to exit from direct involvement it's, 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 in, it's, in the downstream It's sector. good that you've mentioned that yes. because in the 2015 budget, yeah. 200 billionaires has been proposed for 
petroleum for petrol subsidy, subsidy yeah. and um, it was 971 billion in 2014 budget yeah. a decrease of about 80 percent so yes. it's not so bad at least it's not so bad there's a gradual easing out that's a gradual easing out but what we expect from this budget especially given the context of the budget because the budget is in the context of cost reduction in the context of uh, savings, economic diversification, and so on and so forth, and even austerity. Mm. So if you have that, and you have this opportunity to save the economy from further uh, expenditures in subsidy, government should, government should do so. So there is no justification in the 2015 budget for there to be any provision for subsidy. There is no justification for it. If you really want to be sincere, and if you are really committed to the idea, to the sentiments of cost reduction and the sentiments of austerity. And even so the, the provision of diversifying the economy. Of diversifying well. the economy. So the current provision of 200 billion in the budget should be removed. The current provision of 91 billion naira for kerosene uh, subsidy should also be removed. So straight away we are talking of a savings of 291 billion because we are looking at how to, you know, save some costs reduce some, some of this uh, debt burden, and even commit more resources to infrastructure. Because we have a major issue now with the structure of the budget. So this is an opportunity to restructure the budget, to make sure that the budget actually delivers at least some, some measure of value to the citizens. So can we now let, talk about the structure of the budget, first of all, before we begin to even think about which areas in particular. We've already highlighted the fact that you know, the removal of fuel subsidy and kerosene subsidy will be a right step in the right direction. That yeah. will save the economy as much as 291 billion exactly. naira, which can, of course, be channeled into the non-oil sector. Exactly. Because the Minister of uh, Finance is insisting that this economy must become a non-oil economy. Yeah. So let's look at the expenditure structure structure now of the 2015 budget? Well, uh, the expenditure structure is not consistent with the commitment to diversification. Because for you to diversify an economy, you must invest in structures that will improve the capacity of enterprises in that economy. And you can only do that if you are investing appropriately in infrastructure. I take the point that it is not the sole responsibility of the federal government to fix infrastructure. State governments have a role. And private Lo sector too. Local governments have a role. Private sector also have a limited role. But the principal responsibility of government is to provide infrastructure. Because once that is provided, you, you, you create a catalyst, you lay a foundation for economic players to now create wealth. You can, you can hand over some elements of infrastructure provision to the private sector, but you can only go so far. But Particularly, we've had a couple of them, especially for, this, uh, for the toll gate, for instance, the airport. And we've had a couple of uh, you know, collaboration between the private, the, the PPP initiative, the Public Private Partnership Initiative, where we've seen you know, it bring out some good results. So if that continues, if, for instance, the federal government looks at it that to ensure that we have <coughs> adequate infrastructure, let's partner with the private sector. Organized private sector should be ready to get up and take up the challenge. Of course. It's a great opportunity for investment. It's a great opportunity for the private sector. But what I'm saying is that you cannot commit, there's a limit to which the private sector can provide infrastructure. I mean, see the experience we are going through with the power sector reform, one year after privatization. You can see the challenges that this, this, the, the investors are facing. You can see that even the CBN and the government had to intervene on a few occasions to kind of, you know, create better conditions for them. I'm not saying that the private sector doesn't, don't have a role. What I'm saying is that government has a major responsibility in infrastructure provision. It can do it alone. It can do it in partnership with the private sector. Now, back to the issue of the structure of the budget. Yes. Now, uh, now, if you look at the budget, first... That's a big issue with the percentage of budget that is committed to capital spending. It's just it's less than 15%. It's about 633.53 billion naira. Billion naira. Out of a budget of about 4.356 trillion. So the percentage is less than 15%. In this same budget, we are earmarking 943 billion. 
to service debt. We are earmarking uh, over 300 billion for what we call service wide votes. We are earmarking 200 billion for PMS subsidy. We are earmarking 91 billion for kerosene subsidy. Infrastructure you know, expenditure is 93.3 billion. Yes, infrastructure is 93. You, you can see, you, you can see the, the lopsided nature. Lopsided in the sense that spending in a way that can drive growth, that can drive diversification. Now, the budget is now before the National Assembly. The National Assembly has the ultimate power of appropriation in a democratic system as we have. So these are some of the issues we expect them to take on board as they deliberate on the budget. We expect them to look at, well, the issue of debt, there is very little we can do, but we should avoid digging deeper into debt. Before we go to that, yes. I know that you know, at the first sitting that the senators had, at least when they resumed mm -hmm. from the holiday, they look, the first thing they looked at was the 2015 budget. And yeah. I know that some senators immediately said that this budget is not realistic based on the situation that we have, not just on the domestic economic front, mm -hmm. but the international front as well. Yeah, of exactly. course, we still know that uh, to a large percent, we st we, most of our revenue still comes from oil. Yeah. And if it does, at the price that we've set in the, in the, in the budget, 65 naira for the benchmark, mm -hmm. and right, as of this morning, oil prices are hovering between 47 and $48 yeah. per barrel. Yeah. It's not realistic. And so it almost seems as if this budget is not... Um, it, it, it does, it's at variance with the urgent need to diversify the economy and, of course, this austerity measures that the federal government has been talking about. Yes, uh, there are a few inconsistencies there. But in fairness to the Honorable Minister for Finance, she already said that they are adopting a scenario approach to the budget in view of the volatility of the global oil price. So they have quite a number of scenarios, scenarios for $50, scenarios for 55 scenarios for 60 and she even talk, I think, scenarios for even 45 or so. So they, they already have that mindset. So and looking at the, the current even uh, developments in the economy and the way even the National Assembly is looking at it, they are also already looking at, you know, varying the assumption with regard to the benchmark. They are looking at, they are likely to come as low as maybe 45 to 50, at least going by their preliminary uh, deliberations on the budget. Mm. So clearly, uh, the assumption with regard to the benchmark will have to be varied by the National Assembly. Mm. You know. Of course, there is also the assumption with regard to oil output, which is put at, uh, I think, 2.27. And given the fact that we have had this recurring challenge of oil theft, you know, which the government has not actually been able to, to, to curb. I think that should be factored in into the assumption with regard to output. Because uh, for a long time, we have been doing, I think, 1.8 to 2 uh, million barrels per day. So there is no reason to be reviewing that upwards at this time. Mm. So that may also need a, just a, a, marginal, a marginal review downwards, at least to bring it closer, at least to what we had last year. So the, there are issues both with the assumption on the, on, on, on the benchmark and the assumption with regard to the oil output. Okay, I know you were already <coughs> talking about, you know, the fact that we don't need to, the, the, the nation doesn't need to be plunged further into debt. But some have actually said, would it be wise to contemplate borrowing at this time to drive the economy? Just hold on to that thought. Okay. We'll come back and we'll continue this conversation. You're watching this this morning on channels television and on the program we're looking at the economy and focusing on several aspects of the economy we're looking at the 2015 budget of course and we're looking at some of the parameters as contained in the 2015 budget the benchmark for oil price the benchmark for the production the crude oil the crude oil production for the year as well as the um, how the global oil prices will most li likely affect the decision made by the National Assembly and of course how all of this organized, uh, affects organized private sector. I've been having a conversation with the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industries Director General, Mr. Muda Yusuf. Mr. Yusuf will be here with me in the studio when I return in just a moment. Please join me again. <laughs> 